Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. For that answer, thank you for your time so far again. Uh, moving swiftly on to the next topic. One particular thing that Muslims, when they contemplate on it, you look at the past and you see that there was unity amongst the Muslims. When you look and think about, like, say, the Ottoman Empire, before, uh, you had the Seljuk Empire, you had various Muslim empires going back all the way to the Khulafai Rashidin. And at this moment in time, we are very disunited, the Muslims. There's no unity amongst the Muslim countries and everything. And people always look at this and they think, you know, like, you know what once happened or once there was unity and how strong the Muslim, the Muslim nation was. They look at it now. They have, like, I'd say kind of like feel hopeless. Like, what? Firstly, the question I want to say in this regard is, has these times ever befallen the Ummah previously? And secondly, what do Muslims, what can Muslims' mindset be? Or what should they set their mindset to that they should never fall into hopelessness? Because I believe hopelessness is not something... A Muslim, a trait Muslim should have, they should yeah, always be yeah. hopeful. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, hopelessness could... can become kufr, you know, like Gee. disbelief as well. Have Muslims ever faced in the past the fitnas of this day and age? Um, I mean, I remember one of my ustads saying that, you know, the amount of fitnas that we had, the amount of problems, calamities that we're facing with sects and different opinions, and never in the history of. Uh, the Muslim Ummah have there been so many sects or mm. so many divisions gee, and gee. then you know in one way like the, the way social media and has like you know engulfed the, the how people are addicted how the Muslim Ummah is addicted to the social media and films and entertainment and you know the entertainment industry that's something that will definitely this kind of addiction or this kind of obsession yeah. has never been witnessed in the past has it but hopelessness here yeah, definitely like uh, you know, Allah Tabarak wa Taala says clearly in the Quran, "La taqnatu min rahmatillah." Don't don't despair of the hope of Allah Taala. Always have belief. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, that someone who worships towards the end of time, uh, he will get the sawab of uh, fifty, you know, sahaba, uh, equivalent to fifty sahaba ikram. So now that doesn't mean that we become greater, obviously, than any sahabi. No one in this day and age can. Reach the stage of a uh, Sahabi, but it uh, just to, he said that to the Sahaba that someone who worships at the end of time will get the Sahabi could to 50 of you people. So that was just you know a way of um, uh, identifying like the enormity of the Sahab of someone who worships in that. There's another hadith that says, Whoever worships in a time of fitna, then it's like he's migrated towards me. Uh, and there's the great hadith, you know, a beautiful hadith. Um, uh, Man tamasaka bi sunnati inda fasadi ummati falahu ajru mi'ati shaheed. He who holds t uh, fast and tight to the sunnah in a time of uh, fitna and turmoil, uh, for him there is the reward of a hundred martyrs, a um, hundred shaheeds. So there's so many like riwayat. The Holy Prophet ﷺ obviously so knew that these times would come, and he warned and he, the, yeah. the signs of judgment and everything that's happening was today. He told us about it, you know, the coronavirus that everyone's yeah. panicking about these days. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said that um, when fahashi, when obscenity uh, and shamelessness becomes rampant in a community, then uh, you will see illnesses that have never been experienced before. So even illnesses that were never heard of before, diseases and viruses that people never heard of before, he you know he prophesied, sallallahu alaihi wasallam about that, and he told us what the cause would be as well. The cause is the obscenity. So we should never uh, lose hope. There's so much encouraging us about you know the sawab increases. Uh, one cause for all the problems that we've had recently. Hubud dunya, karahiyatul maut, loving the world, dislike for death, and then you know the two main evils that have always the reasons for the the countries fighting amongst each other as well. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the love of wealth and the love of popularity, the love of, so fame and fortune. Right. When he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that um, there's two things that cause more harm to a Muslim's deen 
than two wolves cause to a herd of uh, sheep, a flock of sheep. Uh, and those two things are the love of wealth and the love of popularity. So you know, even uh, we talk about the love of wealth, but mm-hmm. the love of fame and popularity and attention seeking, that's actually, you know, Imam Ghazali says that that's actually more serious. Um, people for popularity, right? you know, like uh, competing for popularity is something that you mm-hmm. see even amongst people who don't have wealth, even amongst poor mm-hmm. people. And then once someone has popularity, wealth usually follows as well. Right. So popularity almost always can lead to wealth, but wealth doesn't always necessarily yeah. lead to popularity. So that's a you know two of the biggest fitnas yeah. that have been always the causes in the past. You know the the cause behind Karbala, yeah. Yazid against Hazrat Imam Hussain radiAllahu taala. It was wanting power. It was that you know being hungry for power. Uh, so the greed for power, the greed for fame and fortune, those have always been our problems. And the cure for hopelessness is also you know to educate ourselves. Because when you have, when there's a lack of education, uh, you can't see solutions in front of you. But when you educate yourself about your deen and understand what you should be doing, shouldn't be doing, you can actually see many paths. The more educated you become, the more solutions you can actually um, see in front of you. And then you know, Allah Tabarak wa Taala says in the Quran, if you fear Allah, um, He will open up paths for you, Indeed. and He will feed you from places that you can't even imagine. And I was reading one tafsir which said that even if uh, um, in the tafsir of that ayat that when you fear Allah Ta'ala even if the seven skies conspire against you yeah. and plot against you uh, to harm you Allah Ta'ala will make a solution and will make an opening out of that for <laughs> you. So the solution is you know, having ilm, having taqwa, having tawakkul. Um, and when we, uh, I really like this saying one of my teachers he said that when you really want to know the cause of something, a problem, yeah. uh, you need to ask five whys. Right. You know, I think that's like a, a famous like a business yeah. uh, trick as well. I think Toyota, the car manufacturer, I, yeah. think, I don't know if they were the first to come up with that, but it's like an international you know, rule as well, right. a rule of success, business success. Always ask five whys. Right. As in, uh, why, if there's a problem, you don't know why it happened, but why did that happen? Uh, why did that happen? Why yeah. did that happen? Why yeah. did that happen? And then the fifth why is going to be your answer. Gee, that's gee. going to be the, the the answer to you, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's what you need to tackle. So we so often just like ask one why right. and assume that that's the problem. Uh, so asking more questions and having knowledge, the more ilmu we have, the more solutions you actually see. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, the more hopeful you become. Gee, gee.